So we've already met the Lord Mayor of Belfast. Now we've got the Lord Mayor of the Cathedral Quarter, Terry Hooley. How are you, sir? I'm very well. <laughs> so you actually were the Lord Mayor. Are you, are I was you still the Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor of the Cathedral Quarter. Well, I haven't had another election since. Uh, I was up against two other people, and uh, it looked like I was I was winning all along. And then one Friday night, I realised that somebody else was ahead. So I can't be having this. So I got in touch with a few punk sites and then I was 300 voters on the head. <laughs> so, so there we go, right. Punks never let you down. Exactly. You're right. You're just back from the Czech Republic as well. Aren't yeah, you? I had a wonderful time in the Czech Republic. I was actually out at a film festival. I've been invited out and uh, it was the UH Stroke UK Film Festival. And most of the films they were showing were about the troubles in Northern Ireland. So I didn't go to any of them. <laughs> well, actually, went to see the crying game. Right. Hadn't seen for years. And they showed Good Vibrations twice. And I did DJ and had a fabulous time. And then Claire and I went up and spent three days in Prague. And it was very lovely, very Christmassy, and all geared up for tourists. Just different, different. But then you come back and you look at the, the, the lights at the City Hall and you just go, Belfast, just get your act together. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still in DJing demand these days. You played Brighton earlier this year as well. Yeah, that was you? great. I played in the, the Per Rocker Hotel, which is the, the most rock and roll boutique hotel uh, in the UK. In the 60s, there was a, a television programme called Stranger on the Shore, after the hit by Agar Bilk, and it was about a French au pair girl who came over to Brighton. And I think that went out in about 62, and I always wanted to go to Brighton. And then at about 65, I really wanted to go to Brighton <laughs> because the mod thing and different things. Uh, I never got to Brighton, and now I know why. Because if I had went to Brighton, I would never come back to Belfast. It's a wonderful place. So I've always wanted to go, and I went there, and it was great. You know, a lot of people like Ian Archer, who used to be in Snow Patrol, wrote all the hits with Gary, the, and Nathan out of Snow Patrol, and, Jimmy Symington, my old guitarist. So everybody came, came and it was just a big party and it was great. So do you have a bucket list at the minute that you're kind of taking things off the older you get? No, I achieved all my ambitions years ago. So, well, my last ambition was to interview Roy Orbis and then he died. Right. So that was a bummer. Uh, but no, I achieved all my ambitions years ago. But I do sort of, I wasn't allowed to fly after my illness for a couple of years there. So uh, next year's the 40th anniversary of Good Vibrations and that's already started to happen because I've been invited to Paris next March and Amsterdam and a few other places next year and I just hope I'm alive to get there. And not only the 40th anniversary of Good Vibrations but a big birthday I believe as well. Well I'll be next Christmas. My ambition is to live to 70. In the 60s the doctors told me if I didn't stop partying and behave, started behaving myself I'd never live to see 30. They told me I'd never lived to see 40, and they told me I'd never lived to see 50. At 50, I decided to have another child, and uh, now I'm 68. Mm -hmm. But it's been, I've had a few misses. I've, it was, there's God's plan, and there's my plan, and my plan was to go years ago, but sort of been quite mentally prepared for that. But uh, I don't know why God keeps keep me alive. And so are you going to do something big then to mark the 70th? Yes, we're going to do a series of concerts and things, and... Uh, Maybe put out a few releases. I've got, we've got, we've got an album. Actually, it was never, never released. Called Belfast on a Thin Wire, but uh, and I found the master tapes recently. So, wow. so well, I mean, I don't want to give too much away at the present time. Watch this station. Yeah, you were out the other night, I believe, with the undertones as well. Did you ever yeah. get fed up hearing Teenage Kicks, or do you still get the same excitement from that? I still get the song? same uh, excitement. Saturday night I was out doing DJ at a private party with a band who, who play cover versions and they said we do a really bad version of Teenage Kicks, but they actually did a great version. Uh, no, I just think it's a great record. Yeah. I know the undertones never thought it was one of their best, but yeah, it's such an anthem. I mean, it is, to me, the, the anthem for Northern Ireland. Exactly, yeah. DJ gigs coming up, what's happening? You've got your New Year's Eve. Gig yeah. as always, yeah. <laughs> That's starting to be a bit of an annual <laughs> event. <laughs> because uh, on the 1st of December, three years ago, uh, 
<coughs> I wasn't well, and uh, my old guitarist, Jimmy Simington, took one look at me and took me to hospital. Turned out I had pneumonia and a, a heart attack. <laughs> And uh, I said, well, I have to be out of here the 16th of December. We were having a, a big Good Vibrations party with some of the bands in London. And they went, you're going nowhere. And then a couple of nights later, I had a bad turn. And they told me I would be dead. If, uh, the time the ambulance would have came to collect me, I would have been dead. So I was in hospital for nearly three months. And I missed out Christmas. And next year, Stuart Bailey said we should do a New Year's Eve party and have it no yeah. And then last year he said, well, we won't get the crowd because you got a sympathy vote that we got the first year. But we actually got a bigger crowd, so I proved him wrong. <laughs> so this will be the third year and it'll be, hopefully it'll be a great night. And what's your big kind of floor filling tunes then? Uh, pulp, mm -hmm. Disco 2000. Course, yeah. I love getting yeah. up and doing a bit of that. <laughs> to that. David Bowie, Let's Dance. Well, I always like to pull something out of the bag, but I'm, I'm not a musical snob. I play anything. I mean, I, 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 reggae gigs, I play reggae. Blues gigs, I play blues. Uh, I'm not big on the country and Irish, I must admit. <laughs> I love country music. I, I mean, I love it all. I'll play anything that anybody wants. Mm -hmm. I am not a musical snob whatsoever. But I mean, if I want, to, if I feel like playing the Nolans, I'll play the oh, Nolans. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one for New Year's Eve. In the mood for dancing. Yeah. I'm always in the mood for a bit of dancing, but I only dance close, real close. Oh. <laughs> now we know about your love of uh, girl bands as well, especially the '60s yeah. girl oh, bands. That's, that's, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, uh, Sean Kelly, my, my old friend from who runs the Cathedral Quarters Festival, uh, said to me. Would I like to do DJ uh, supporting the, the uh, Iconets? Mm. And because of my love of girl bands, especially 60s girl bands, I'm, I'm going to be in heaven. You will love them. I've shared yes. a stage with them and they're stunning. They come out these lovely big long gold yeah. ball gown things. That's right do. up my yeah. street. So exactly. it is. So it gives me a chance to play all the things like the Shangri-Las and the Supremes and the Ronettes and the Crystals and all the stuff that I love. The Shangri-Las had a special place in your heart, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. All right. Well, I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually get my Shangri La's poster in the end, <laughs> because it says at the end of Good Vibrations, the movie Terry never got his autograph, Shangri La's. Well, then one day I I got an email from Mary Weiss, the lead singer, and I wasn't afraid. I was afraid to open it, <laughs> <laughs> so I made myself a cup of tea and I opened it, and she said, "What is it you want autographed?" And I sort of explained a few things to her, and she found an original poster uh, autographed by all the band in their mother's house, and they presented me the, the night the film was launched at the Ulster Hall. There you go. So was, I was actually thinking of reprinting a lot of copies and giving them away at the Iconet. You should gig. do, yeah. Or I might just keep it for myself, no. What's Christmas got in store for you? I think it'll be a very quiet time. Mm -hmm. 22nd, I'm down to Goat's Toe and Bangor. 23rd, possibly be at Antisocial in the Maple Leaf Club, which will be the very last one because we're going to knock it down. Right. But I'm not allowed to do DJ. Okay. Jimmy says, because it's my birthday, I just have to go along and enjoy myself. Yeah. So uh, I think Christmas will be very quiet All right. for me. Well, Terry. It'll be uh, down at my, my future mother in law. Not if she can help it over her dead body. <laughs> I'll be down there for Christmas uh, and be all very quiet. All right. Great stuff. Well, Terry, thank you for joining us. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you again. And we'll have you back next year, just yeah, before your 70th be birthday alive. as well. I, 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 nothing I like better come down and terrorising the, the good people of Northern Invasions. Terry, thank you and have a great Christmas. And you, Robin. All the best. <laughs>